Hi everyone. In this video we're going to be specifically looking at um, the differences in property plant and equipment net versus a property plant and equipment account in addition to an accumulated depreciation account being given on the balance sheet when we're looking at creating a statement of cash flows. So here we're provided with a problem. We're given a lot of extra information in the story up there that we really have to pay attention to and we'll take a look at that here in a little bit but what I really want you to notice right away is that we're given a complete balance sheet and a complete income statement and we're asked to compute or prepare a statement of cash flows for this company using the indirect method. So there are a couple of things I want us to look at before we move on and specifically that is the idea of property plant and equipment. So in prior videos we talked about property plant and equipment net and what that meant and we're going to discuss that here in a second as well but notice in this balance sheet we're given property plant and equipment at cost as well as its accumulated depreciation account and you'll remember that property plant and equipment net meant that that accumulated depreciation account had already been taken out in that line item. Here we're given both of them. So let's review briefly the property plant and equipment net T account and what that looked like. So you'll recall we had our beginning and ending balances and if we purchased any equipment during the period of course that would increase our property plant and equipment net account. But because we have this word net on our account that means something has been taken out. And in this case it's depreciation. So depreciation expense for the period would cause this account to go down. If we sold anything during the period we would need to decrease this account by the book value which is the cost less its accumulated depreciation. So you wouldn't take out the cost of the asset because this is property plant and equipment net account. So you would take away the book value again which is the cost of the asset less its total accumulated depreciation. So that's a little bit of review of the property plant and equipment net account which we don't use in this problem because again we're given um, property plant and equipment and its accumulated depreciation account. So in this situation we need both T accounts. So we have our property plant and equipment and our accumulated depreciation account here and you can see I've provided the beginning and ending balances that they gave us. So property plant and equipment is an asset so it carries a normal debit balance. Accumulated depreciation is a contra asset so it does, it does appear in the asset section of the balance sheet but it carries a credit balance. In the story it tell us, tells us that we sold equipment for $15,400 and that equipment had an original cost of $13,600. Well since we have separated our property plant and equipment and accumulated depreciation accounts the cost of whatever we sell is what comes out of the property plant and equipment account because that is kept at cost. So that $13,600 will be a credit to property plant and equipment. Once we know the um, cost of what we sold we can now find our purchases amount because we know that $138,000 less $13,600 is not $153,000. So we must have purchased something. So we can check ourselves. 138,000 plus purchases of 28,600 minus sales. We sold one asset, $13,600, leaves us with an ending of $153,000. Now what you should recall is that when we have a contra asset, that contra asset account like accumulated depreciation it goes wherever its companion account property plant and equipment goes. So since we sold something we also have to get rid of its accumulated depreciation as well. So in this case we had beginning accumulated depreciation of $27,300 and it tells us in our income statement that we had depreciation expense of $5,400 which increases our accumulated depreciation and it tells us that we had ending accumulated depreciation of 30,200 which is there in our balance sheet. Well 27,300 plus 5400 does not equal 30,200 because we sold an asset and its accumulated depreciation needs to go along with it so we have to take that off the books. 
and the accumulated depreciation associated with that asset would be $2,500. So now that helps our T account balance to that ending balance. One last thing on this page too before we move on. We know that in the operating activity section of the statement of cash flows, we analyze gains and losses as well. And you'll notice on our income statement, we actually have a gain on the sale of this equipment. So that means we sold it for more than the book value by $4,300. So let's take a look at how we got that. And to show you that we really didn't have to be given that information. So it tells us in the story that we sold equipment for $15,400. That's what we got for it. And that piece of equipment had a book value of $11,100. Well, the difference in those two should be the gain, which we can verify that with our simple equation there. We can see that the gain actually is what it showed us on the income statement, $4,300. All right, so here we're back to the main problem. And again, you've got the balance sheet and income statement and a little bit additional information. I would like for you to pause the video and I would like for you to try and complete a complete income statement um, operating, investing, and financing sections, and any non-cash investing if that exists. And then once you're finished, come back, and I will show you the answer to this problem. And here is the solution. Here we have our complete statement of cash flows. I won't go through every line item since we have done that in prior, prior videos, but I would ask that you look this statement of cash flows over and see if there's anything that you see that may differ from what you did and why they differ. That is where the learning happens. So make sure that you see where things have gone wrong. Also, just to point out again, there's always a check figure on your statement of cash flows. It's the net increase or decrease in cash. When you take that number, which is the sum of the three sections, the operating, investing, and financing, in this case they sum to $24,000, which should be the difference in your beginning and ending balance of cash on the balance sheet. So if you take this change in cash and add beginning cash from the balance sheet, that should equal your ending cash from the balance sheet.